what uh, I'm going to do next is basically give you an example of a water disinfection system. What, what I want to do is uh, give you a basic calculator or give you an idea of the calculator which we can use to get to a point where what uh, it will give you a basic idea of how much uh, power uh, requirement uh, you need for, for a log reduction. So what I'm showing here is a very basic water disinfection reactor. One of the advantages of UV, UVC LEDs compared to the mercury lamp is that UV LEDs are a point source. And you can actually place the LEDs outside the flow cell, unlike the mercury tube, because mercury tubes are long and give out UVC light in 360 Format so people normally place it right in the middle of the flow cell. For for the um, LED source, we can place the LED source outside the flow tube, looking in. We have a water in and water out, and uh, some of the critical criteria uh, or the parameters we really need to um, follow are flow cell dimensions. So basically, what is the length of the flow, uh, flow tube we are using, and what is the diameter of the flow tube? What is the UV transmittance of the water to be disinfected? This is very critical because uh, uh, when the transmittance of the water goes low, you need much higher um, intensity of UVC. Uh, of course, what is the dosage requirements, which is very critical. Uh, flow rate for the system. So, so what is the, uh, uh, how fast the water is coming in and how, how fast you want the water to come out. And finally, the material of construction uh, for the flow cell. Um, you, the reason material is pretty, uh, pretty critical is uh, you, you need to take the advantage of the photons which are generated by the UVC LEDs by ha having them reflect more. Just to give you a, uh, an example is if you use a, a Teflon based material, uh, UVC actually has a very good reflective properties compared to stainless steel. So, so you will use the photons a lot more effectively um, with that material. So here is a, a very basic uh, uh, calculation I have done. Um, so what I've done is I've looked at what is the flow rate for the system, which is 0.45 liters per minute. Uh, the UV transmittance of the water, which was used, was 95%. Uh, Some of the criteria we actually have is, uh, says that the length of the flow cell was 5 centi uh, centimeters, and the diameter is 2 centimeters. And we are talking about the in internal uh, construction, so that is where the water is flowing. Uh, and then uh, what is the dosage requirements? Uh, we, we are talking about a 40 millijoules per square centimeter, and this is based on our NSF 55 um, class A requirements um, for the dosage. And then uh, we can calculate how long it will take uh, for the water to flow through through this uh, uh, flow cell dimension, and we can calculate the, uh, the LED power. Now what I've done is I've kept everything constant on the second uh, column over here where I'm saying that it's still the 5 centimeter length, 2 centimeters diameter. The time time for the uh, uh, water to flow is 2.1 uh, seconds, uh, which is still same because we haven't changed anything. But what I changed over here is the dosage requirements. And uh, we went from 40 millijoules to 100 millijoules per square centimeter. And uh, you can see that the power uh, requirements have gone up. And uh, over here, the power requirements went back down. What we are showing is that uh, if you can figure out a way to basically increase the residence time of the water um, in the flow cell, that will help in redu reduction uh, of the, uh, the, the LED power required. So there is a uh, much more uh, complex, basically, uh, steps uh, for this, doing this power requirement calculations. Uh, uh, over here, we talk about what are the applications requirements. So when a customer typically talks to us, we would ask some of these questions over here. Uh, where, uh, what is the flow rate? What is the UV transmittance? Uh, what is the tube length, uh, the tube diameter, and of course the required dosage? And then we would basically go and do our calculations and come up with the, the power required. In, in this case, we are talking about at, uh, 133 milliwatts per, uh, of LED power. Now, one thing to uh, remember that we are not uh, looking at any of the losses 
and we are also not looking at any of the material characteristics. So we are not uh, uh, taking into account uh, the, the reflective properties. Uh, uh, that is something we can actually do um, separately uh, for the calculation. And then the last thing is that these power requirements we talk about also are at the beginning of the life versus uh, the end of the life. So we, we can discuss that uh, separately depending on what, what your requirements are. Um, but this is how we, we can do the calculation and give you a basic idea of um, the, the power requirement for your system.